I'm going to take just a moment and, and introduce our guest tonight. Uh, before the last time that you were here, I hadn't seen you since I was a little kid in Fayetteville, Tennessee. I was all of maybe 10 years old, and uh, we had a revival service where Pastor uh, uh, Lloyd Buster came, and he spoke, and there were some prophecies that were given that night. And we didn't realize it, but all of those prophecies led for us moving to Louisiana. And it wasn't until we got to Louisiana that we started stitching things together. And really, I promise, it was four or five years down the road, even when we were in Louisiana, we were still putting things together. We were still seeing how God had woven everything together. And so throughout my whole life, I've remembered that. And it was things like that that kept me from going too far off. You, you hear my father talk about how I saw too much to be able to, to go out in the world and just lose my faith. I've seen miracles. I've seen prophecies, true prophecies. And that's one of the things that throughout my life I would always remember, well, if there's really a God, it's because this happened. I know there's got to be a God because this was said and this happened. And so I just want you to know you had an impact on my life. You had a, a great impact on my life. And so I love you. I, I don't know if you realize this, but all throughout the years, I would ask my dad, man, when's the last time you heard from Prophet Bustard? And it was just literally, I promise, the Holy Spirit be talking to me too. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't two or three weeks before you called him that I asked dad, I said, when's the last time? I, really, I wonder what's been going on with him. And then just a week or so later, he called me and he was like, you're not going to believe who just called me. And so I, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm glad that we've seen you, you know, not 20 years later, but just a couple months later. So I'm so glad to see him again. So y'all give it up for Pastor <laughs> Prophet Lloyd Bustard. Let's give Pastor Adam a great round of applause. Don't you love that beautiful spirit? Amen. Well, we're just glad to be here. Honey, give them a wave. <laughs> Pamela's here. Uh, we're, we're very uh, honored to be here. Uh, I brought a gift for you tonight. Go to the welcome center, the welcome table. And pick up my CD. We're going to start working on some more new music, but I want to bless you. So I think we brought about 30. Don't pay anything. It's just a gift, okay? Thank you. In fact, who wants one right now? Okay, come on. You got to come get it. It's got great songs on it. Enjoy. Thank you. Well, Pastor Shane asked to come and asked him. We were more than willing to come, and uh, I love Pastor Shane and his beautiful wife, Pam, and this, this great son of theirs, right? What a great, what a great church, what a great pastor, Amen. and pastor's wife that you have. I always tell people to stand behind them. Don't get too close to them. You may be on their back. <laughs> Don't get too far away. They may wonder where you are. But there's a beautiful, happy medium, and especially in the times we're living in now, I know that you need to uh, pray for your pastors, your elders, your associates, your youth, your children. Just love all them because uh, we are the spiritual warfare has definitely heightened and intensified. Amen? And, uh, but it, it's like, I wonder if I should get down on this floor. Because I think I feel better. If I had Elvis hair, I'd stay up there. But I don't have Elvis hair. And I'm real conscious of that crazy stuff you can see right through me you can see what the weather is going to be tomorrow just look through there 
Uh, see, I got to turn around. Now you're going to see all that stuff. Can I move this down here? Thanks. Somebody wants to help Pastor Adam, that'd be great. Uh, it feels a little better down here. Well, it's a Wednesday night, too, you know. All right? Thank you, Pastor Adam. Uh, so, uh, Pastor Shane uh, uh, told me that, you know, he's been teaching on the gifts of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and asked me to do that. And so I'm going to... Uh, talk to you uh, on the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Now, you're going to want to get your pen and paper out because I'm going to be a professor of this stuff tonight. (laughs) Well learned, well trained. (laughs) I've been there and done that. Stood tall and fall flat in my face before when you, you know. Because when you start exercising the gifts, uh, but for the next, uh, it's 7.05, right? Huh? Yes. Okay. Uh, Really? I want to be invited back. (laughs) Uh, We're excited because Pam and I have been planning a trip back up to North Carolina so we got some grandkids down there I think I think we got a daughter and a husband too but that's not the issue is it we got grandkids huh so uh we're gonna get up early in the morning and drive on over to Asheville we love Asheville North Carolina we're gonna spend the night there and hang out there and uh and then go on down to North Carolina uh, so in the next few moments, what I want to do is I want to I want to talk to you about the gifts of the Spirit. From uh, and I haven't been able. Do you have a scripture lady or man there tonight working the media? Good. Uh, let's do the New King James. Don't do Joe Biden. <laughs> don't like that translation. Let's do the New King James. I don't know where that came from. My wife just looked at me and said, what in the world? Yeah. Don't do the Donald Trump translation. (laughs) Uh, But I just really, I love these kind of uh, opportunities uh, to teach because I get to really share uh, not just about the word, what the Lord has shown me through word, with the word, but through pre- through practice and experience. Okay, and uh, there's one thing I've learned about the anointing: it's not taught, it's caught. You can teach doctrine, you can teach theology, you know, you can you can even teach soul winning, but you can't really teach the anointing. It's, it's a happening. It's an event that just takes place. You right? You know, and I liken it to, uh, I'm already in the word here, okay? So I'll tell you what, uh, uh, scripture brother, lady, sister. Okay, I see you. Uh, <laughs> have 1 Corinthians 12 ready, okay? And when, you, when I ask you to put it, you just pop it up there, okay? Uh, I liken that uh, terminology about the anointings. It's not taught, it's caught. I liken it from the event that happened in the Bible, in the Old Testament, when Elijah was going to be caught up in the whirlwind and uh, in Elisha... Uh, There's a great, incredible principle that you can learn. We all can learn from Elijah. And we learn it when Elijah spoke to him. Because Elijah is getting ready to go up into heaven. And then he just looks at that Elijah and just says, uh, 
you know, you've never bothered. I'm paraphrasing, but I think you can get it right. He just basically said, you've never been a hindrance to me. You've never get in my way. Uh, you've never had an ulterior motive. Uh, you, <laughs> you've never asked me for anything. And I just appreciate that. And he said, because you haven't asked, I'm going to make a request to you. What do you want? And Elisha said, I want a double portion of what you've got. And so here's where the revelation comes in of the anointing is, is uh, caught, not taught. Because Elijah said, well, you've asked a hard, kind of a hard thing. But nevertheless, he said, if you catch my mantle when it falls, and that's it right there. If you catch it, you will have that double portion. And the mantle leaves his body and is gliding through the air, coming towards the earth. And Elijah reaches out and grabs it. Do you know that the last miracle that Elijah did was parting waters? The first miracle Elijah, Elisha did was parted waters. He stretched that mantle towards the water and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when you study it, Elijah actually did twice as more and the, it's like twice the, not just twice the miracles, but twice the power miracles. Okay? So that's, that's what I would like to have happen here tonight. I would like to get a hold of your faith. Because that's who I'm I'm going to be talking to two, two entities tonight. Your faith and your spirit. All right? Does that make sense? I'm going to be talking to two entities. I'm going to be talking to your faith and your spirit, man. I'm not going to be talking to your feelings. Not going to be talking to your personality. I'm going to be talking to your faith. Because faith moves God. And... Here's the other thing. Everybody in this building has faith. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 3, He has given to everyone the measure. And do you know something else? The key is in the original writings of that verse, Paul said he is, God has given to everyone the measure of faith. He didn't say a measure of faith. He said the measure because if he had a said A measure, that might have opened up a little can of worms here with us all. Because if it had been A measure, you and I might have been looking at one or another and, and saying, I wonder if God gave you more faith than I did, than I have. I wonder if I have more faith than you. But he didn't give him A measure, he gave him the measure. Amen. So what are you trying to say, Lord? I'm trying to say we all have equal amount of faith. I don't have more faith than you. And you don't have more than me. I may use mine more, or you may use yours more. But the whole principle of using something, anything that is used or exercised becomes stronger. And so practice using your faith. And that's what I want to talk to you for a few moments tonight. And then we're going to pray. Okay? And uh, I'm, going to be very, I'm going to be very open here for the next 20, 25 minutes. Very open. Because I'm, I'm not trying to keep any secrets to keep me above you. Boy, Paul said, I, I wish that you would all prophesy. I, iron sharpens iron. I want to I wanna challenge you tonight. I want you to get, get a hold of this so you can just walk out of here expecting to hear from God, be blessed of God, and be used of God even in a greater measure than you have been. Okay? So let's look at Romans 12. Um, no, uh, 1 Corinthians 12. 
And uh, let's start reading at verse 1, okay? You got that ready? Good. Now look at that now, okay? So this is Paul teaching. He says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I don't want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God. This is so powerful. I love what Paul's doing right here. And you're going to see the importance of it here. Down through the verses. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. No demon will ever say Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. There are diversities of gifts, different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one to what? To profit with. Not to prove that you're more spiritual, but to profit with. In fact, I might as well make this important statement right now. Gifts of the Spirit do not prove that you're anointed. It doesn't even prove that you're a great person. Character proves the anointing. Should have had an amen right there. Amen. Amen. Because when you start really getting the whole strategy of Paul's teaching, that's what, one of the first things that really touched me was Paul really wanted to help people. He wanted not only people to be raised up in the ministry, but he wanted them to have the premise right and, and the whole motive right. And so he says, he says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given, here we go, nine gifts of the Spirit. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. It's the first gift of the Spirit is the gift of the word of wisdom. If anybody asks me, what should I, what gift should I seek? Well, Paul, you know, there's a, there's a little argument there where Paul really promotes prophecy, right? But then, in being in the ministry over 40 years and prophesying from, in every kind of a situation from being in, in uh, poverty-stricken, a poverty-stricken country to people who slept on the ground, to uh, ministering, to billionaires and entertainers and sports superstars. I've been there and done all that. I really think that I would encourage you to seek the gift of the word of wisdom first. And here's why. Because wisdom... It just has so many important, important sectors in it. Wisdom is like the great reporter. It tells you where, what, when, why, and how. Does that make sense? Because... 
And here's the other thing, too. I have seen, and probably I've been guilty of that before, you know. When, you, when you're young and you're full of energy, you lack some wisdom. And I remember years ago, I lacked wisdom one day. <laughs> I lacked wisdom one day. I was flying somewhere, and get on the plane, and, and I was just, you know, I, I like to walk in the Spirit. I really do like to walk in the Spirit. And uh, I was not only walking in the Spirit, but I was kind of getting caught up with my ego. Because all these things, good things were happening and recognition and ministry and all that. And so I'll never forget, it was just, I got on the plane one day and I looked and there was the uh, NFL legend quarterback from Alabama, Kenny Stabler. Oh, he's a tall, he was a, he was a tall, dark, not dark, he was a tall, handsome dude. And uh, I said, hey, Snake. That was his name, right? And he said, hey, how you doing? And I said, yeah, I'm good. And he sat in the same row as me. And, and I just, I don't know, I was just, I probably meant well, but it didn't go over well. He, said, he asked me, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a man of God. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. Spooked him out, scared him out, freaked him out. He wouldn't say one word to me after that during the whole flight. In fact, he might have got up and moved. I'm not, I'm not past saying that. He might have did that. But I just, you know, I just looked back and said, Lord, you ain't got no wisdom. See, see, wisdom would have said, don't say that. Wisdom would have just, you know, just tell him you're a minister, you know. Just give him a soft presentation first. Huh? Right? So that's why, you know, you, you, seek, you seek wisdom. Because it's just so beautiful to have the gift of wisdom operating in power. <coughs> have the gift of wisdom operating while you're prophesying. While you're operating in the word of knowledge. Am I making sense tonight? Yeah. For instance, when you have the gift of the word of wisdom, if I'm ministering to somebody and prophesying to somebody, I always, not always, but so many times, my wife's heard me say this, so many times I would say, as a prophet, I see more than I say. And I do. I've seen more than I say. I've seen, I've been ministering to people and, you know, I've just, uh, I go into this place and I see some things that are wrong in their life. And, uh, you know, you, the gift of wisdom will say, don't say that in the microphone. Right? So that's, you know, that's, these are examples that, that I've learned through the school of hard knocks. I've learned through practical experience. So we have the gift of the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another is the gift of the word of knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge. Knowledge mostly deals with the present, okay? And the gift of the word of knowledge mostly deals in the natural, physical realm, okay? So what I mean by that is when I started out ministering many years ago, I operated in, uh, I operated, uh, in the gift of the word of faith. I had incredible faith, still have that faith today. I operated, I don't know how much wisdom I was operating. I don't know if I <laughs> had that gift yet. <laughs> it might have been dormant. But I operated in the gift of miracles and healings. Okay? 
plus the gift of the word of knowledge. So the gift of the word of knowledge is, is for example, I could call people out and um, tell them what was, through the gift of the word of knowledge, tell them what was wrong with their body, their affliction. Done that thousands upon thousands of times. And when that gift of the word of knowledge reveals you've got heart trouble, you've got cancer, well then the gift of faith is already operating because it, it takes faith to operate the word of knowledge. So after that, the, the gift of miracles steps in and you just start spe- praying and speaking it. Amen? So that's what the gift of the word of knowledge is uh, more, more or less about. After that, we've got what? Through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts. There is the measure of faith and there is the gift of faith. Okay? I think you know what that means. To another, the gifts of healing. Notice he said gifts of healing. Gifts of healing. Because there's different kinds of healings that people need. There's physical healing. There's mental healing. There's psychological healing. There's emotional healing. So Paul said there's gifts of healing. All right? And then he said you after the gifts of healing, where are we at? To another, the working of miracles. There's the gifts of healing and there's the gift of miracles. Miracles are instantaneous. Healing is progressive. I always personally have always personally believed that you would really appreciate a healing more than a miracle. And here's why. Miracles happen instantaneous. And, and many times we forget it almost as quickly as it happens. But when the, if a gift of healing is operating, you're seeing the progress every day or every week or every month. And you appreciate progress more than you do a miracle instantaneously. Does that make sense? So that's the di- difference between miracles and healings. Miracles are instant. Healing is progressive. Uh, to another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. I know you all know what these are. To another, there's different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things. I'm going to stop right there. And I would like you to go now, sweet lady, on the Scriptures to Exodus 39. Have that ready. Exodus 39. And just have that ready for me. Now, if you read on down in 1 Corinthians 12, that's when Paul starts, after he talks about the gifts of the Spirit, he brings out a couple really good points. The same Jesus and the same Lord. And then after that, you read on down, he kind of talks about unity and, and, and uh, uh, he uses, you know, the physical me- metaphor The hand can't say to the eye, I don't have need of you. The foot can't say to the ear, I don't need you anymore. Because we're all in the same body. And and he said the same spirit operates in the body. What? For the perfecting of the saints. For everyone to profit with. Amen? Okay? So... The gifts of the Spirit are not, you know, like I said, they don't, they don't prove how spiritual you are. They're in the church. That's another important thing for you to remember. Paul taught that God set the gifts of the Spirit in the church. They're in the church. Y'all getting tired? Okay. 
I, I kind of liken the gifts of the Spirit, you know, in the church. Just kind of with your mind, picture a, a, a mechanical shop. Okay? And in that shop, you might have, you might have plumbing tools. You might have carpentry tools. You might have truck motor tools. The whole point is, for whatever the need is, the tool is in the shop. That's why I liken the gifts of the Spirit. If somebody is, you're dealing with, if somebody is uh, uh, wondering, you know, if they're bound by the devil, well, you, you just, wisdom will say, talk to them first. Let them talk to you. Ask them some questions. And before you even know it, the Holy Spirit knows which tool to get out of the chest. And the tool is discerning the spirits. And before you even know it, you're operating because you're part of the church. And the gifts are in the church. And you're dealing with a situation that is beyond your help in the natural and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and you have the, you have the faith to activate the, get these gifts. So before you know it, you're discerning that spirit. It goes the same way as somebody says, I'm, I'm sick, I'm afflicted. Call on the gift of healing. Call on the gift of miracle. You can operate in the gifts of the spirit. Amen? If you, get, if you don't get anything, get this. You can operate in the gifts of the Spirit. He has put them in the church for everybody to profit with and for the saints to grow in God. Amen? Amen. Now, the other thing that I think needs to be made real important is uh, when Pam and I went to, uh, uh, we planted a great church in Charlotte, uh, what, over 20 years ago now, right? And I knew I was supposed to do it, just knew it. God told me many years ago. And we planted a great church there in Charlotte, North Carolina. And <laughs> But up until that time, I was on TBM, I was on Benny Hinn's a lot, and all these different things, shows, and ministering prophetically. And, and, you know, just, you're like, I was like a, I was like a, uh, you know, just an eagle flying around, no interruption, just, just flying and prophesying and just doing amazing things in the Holy Spirit. Well, when we went to start a church, start a church, I let then all these people come out of the woodwork. And it wasn't but a few weeks that we knew that, they were not there to receive a pastor. They were there to receive a prophet. And uh, we had to sort of sort through the people who wanted a pastor versus the people who wanted a prophet. A prophet cannot pastor a church. You understand that? What do you mean by that? Well, if I had built that church as a prophet, not as a shepherd, it would have been a zoo. It would have been a circus. Amen? Because that kind of structure invites the crazies. It really does. Huh? Well, isn't this good? And they come with their cards. I'm prophet so-and-so. I'm prophet of so-and-so. I'm evangelist so-and-so. They come with their cards, and, and they want to minister, and they want to minister. And you can't pastor them. Very rare the person is that you can pastor like that. And so... 
we had mighty revivals and built a great church and so many people delivered and saved and healed. But as a pastor, that's who I was. I did not prophesy as a prophet very many times. Okay? Most of the time prophetically that God would use me as I was pastoring, most of the time I think was actually in altar calls when I was praying for people in the altar. And I would just go to them and prophesy to them. They'd say, how do you know that? Because I'm, well, just, God just t- told me. The other thing is you can't put pressure on your pastor. Well, pastor, you should be prophesying like this. I, could, I can't do this to the church that I've pastored. Because you have all the carnal knowledge. You know everybody's name. You know what they're going through. You know where they work. You have that carnal knowledge, right? So I think that's very important. to remember. Here's the other thing I'm going to remark on. Years and years ago, the Lord spoke to me so clearly. Oh, he's, this was so beautiful when he spoke to me. He said, Lloyd, you need two prayer lives. You need two prayer lives. I'd write that down. He said, one, the first one is the most important. And he said, the first prayer life you need, he said, is all about your personal relationship with me. He said, number one, your soul. Your soul, your personal relationship. Boy, I'm beginning to feel the Holy Spirit here coming. He's here, but he's starting to rise up here. First prayer life, if you, if you recognize yourself as a minister, whether it's a singer, youth pastor, no matter what it is, you're a minister. Feeding the hungry, you're a minister. And you need two prayer lives. And the first one is the most important because it's the first one has to do with you not being a minister at all. It's a soul that needs Jesus. A sinner saved by grace. Amen? So that's when you go to him. I've practiced this prayer life for many, many years. God, I'm not coming to you as a prophet. I'm not, call, I'm not coming to you as a preacher, as a teacher, as a singer. I'm coming to you as your son, as a sinner that's saved by grace. And I don't want to pray to you about the gifts of the Spirit. I don't want to pray to you about doors that I want to you open up for me. I'm just a sinner here. And I need you to refresh me in my spirit, renew me in my spirit. And I'd spend time and just work in that most important prayer life. And then you will feel a transition. You will know when you've prayed through about something. That's another important thing, folks. You just will feel the burden lift and you'll feel your spirit released. And so you will know when to transition into the second prayer life. And the second prayer life is your ministry. Okay? So you need two prayer lives. First one, personal. You and Jesus. You don't pray about anything about your ministry in that. You just, it's all about you and your soul. And you will know when you've prayed through on that. And then... You transition transition to the second prayer life. Ask God to open up doors. Amen. Amen. Ask God to use you greatly. Huh? Ask God to use you in miracles, signs, and wonders. Why? Because your soul is already clean. That day he doesn't have to worry about you getting all lifted up and puffed up and messed up. 
Because you've got, you've got the alignment right. Amen? I want to show you something that I saw many years ago. And it's what really kept me and keeps my wife and I in tune with one another. Exodus 39, they're talking about what I'm going to read to you. And this is so significant because he's talking about the garment of the priest. But there's two things that are going to really stick out, and I'm going to show you. So, Sister Scripture, <laughs> let's start at the t Exodus 29, and let's read at the 22nd verse to the verse 26, okay? So let's start at verse 22. Now, he's describing the clothing of the priest, the attire of the priest. In Exodus 39 and verse 22. 39. If I said 29, I need you to forgive me. <laughs> I think initially I said 39. Yeah, yeah. 39, verse 22. We're well, sorry, right. we'll wait. Well, we don't want to wait all night, but we'll wait. <laughs> oh, this is so good. The Lord commanded Moses. He made the robe of the ephod a woven work. All of blue. You know, when you study in the professional world, Sometimes if you'll look at the President of the United States or any dignitaries, if they've got a, if they're meeting somebody new or anything like that, or if there's a little, little trouble, they have a choice. I can read my, I can wear my red tie, which is power, or I can wear the blue tie, which is warm. So that's significant right there. He said, he said, uh, make, make the, he made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of blue, warmth, not intimidation, comfortable to be around. And there was an opening in the middle of the robe like the opening in a coat of mail with a woven binding all around the opening so that it would not tear. They made it on the hem of the robe, pomegranates of blue, purple, royal, and scarlet, blood, and of fine woven linen. And they made the bells of pure gold, and put the bells between the pomegranate on the hem of the robe, all around between the pomegranates, a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, all around the hem of the robe to minister in. As the Lord had commanded Moses. Now keep that last verse right up there like it that, okay? Because there is such a beautiful revelation right there. Notice he said a golden bell. A pure golden bell. And then he said a pomegranate. A bell and a pomegranate. A bell and a pomegranate. Paul said without love. I'm just clanging cymbals and sounding brass. <laughs> See, when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, there's a beautiful counter to the gifts of the Spirit, and they're called the fruit of the Spirit. 
There's nine gifts of the Spirit, and there just happens to be nine fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Oh, let me read that. Let me say that again. Because when I say these get fruit of the Spirit, I picture the priest walking around. And if they never had the pomegranate between each bell, it would have been nothing but noise. Clanging bells. Not inviting. Not good to hear. Just hurts your ears. But the priest could walk around. And those bells were so beautiful to look at. And if they heard, were heard, they weren't loud and clangy because they were balanced with the pomegranates. And see, that's the way the church should be. And that's the way the gifts of the Spirit should be. They should be balanced with the fruit of the Spirit. Because I don't want anybody prophesying to me that does not manifest the fruit. I don't care if I'm caught up and does, don't even know what's up from down. Because I need people to minister to me in love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Because that represents the whole person. Because everybody that you minister to is not going to have your personality. And you know how great you are. They're not going to be as loving as you. And as patient as you. Because you're way up there, see. So you're going to have to understand and have to have that nine gifts of the Spirit to balance the fruit. You will speak the truth in love. You will realize God has given me these gifts, and I'm just about done here. He has given me these gifts to build up people, to build up, not to hurt, not to condemn, not to intimidate, to build up. I wish I had time just to tell you of my little experiences that Pam and I have had over the last 40 years. I've just seen, and it just... Because God taught me. Like that time I looked at Kenny Stabler's, I'm a man of God. Well, I lost that client. That was gone. He slammed the door in my face. <laughs> Never got invited back. I've learned. I've learned the importance of the gift of the word of wisdom. It tells you where, what, why, why, how. And I've learned to focus not just on the gifts but on the fruit. Is my heart right? Am I ready to minister? Mm -mm -mm. Am I ready to minister? Oh, I'm hearing from God, but... Yeah, you're hearing from God, but God's not hearing from you. See, I don't think you should ever get in the position or in the place of accomplishments in the kingdom where you can't fall on your face and worship God. Amen. Hallelujah. In closing, it's not how long you pray, it's how you pray. That's another thing I learned. It's not how long you pray. I know people, I've actually met people that pray three hours a day. And they're still tormented, they're still depressed, and they still worry and fear. It's not how long you pray. It's how you pray. And Jesus told us how to pray. He said, ask anything in my name, and I will do it. And then he said this. He said, when you pray, believe that you receive while you pray. That's the key. When I pray for somebody's miracle or anything, 
I'm believing that I'm re- she's receiving it while I'm praying. Stand to your feet, everybody. I don't like to go way out on the prophetic limb without the pastor here. <laughs> but the other thing is I didn't want to overhold you tonight because it's Wednesday night. But what I would like to do is I would like to invite you down if we can move uh, these, thank you, move this out of the way because this is how we did it before. And I would just like to, to invite you down to join me here. And I would like for us all to just begin to, you can come down right now. Thank you. Uh, I would love to come back sometime and just I love teaching I love teaching on this I'm pretty good at it because I've I've lived it I've lived you know and practice it I can teach you how to hear from God and I'm very practical I love this because we need people operating in the gifts of the spirit we need, but you, 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 can't, you can't let the fruit rot. You can't let the fruit die on the vine. The fruit's got to be fresh and ripe every day. Hallelujah. Father, I love you and I love Pastor Shane and Pam and this beautiful family. This is a really, really special place. This is a special church. No doubt about it. Thank you for touching Pastor Shane and Pam right now. Thank you that the spiritual warfare has already been won. See, I can tell you this. You say, well, Lloyd, how do you hear from God? I just, I give myself to God. I just give myself to God. I don't try to psych myself up. You got to understand that I've been doing this for many, many years. And uh, I know the voice of God now. And you say, well, have you ever missed? Yeah, I'm in the flesh. I'm flesh and bones. But the gift doesn't miss. Come here, brother, in the nice cool warrior shirt you go to church here hallelujah so where are you at Lord well I just looked at him I'm teaching you here okay I'm teaching you something right now did he, did you hear lightning for him no I don't even know what I'm gonna say to him <laughs> it's a process it's a process See, most of the time that you go to hear from God, it will be a still, small voice. I have had, I think the only time, in fact, I know it. I've probably had God speak to me in the last 40 years. When you really, hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of times. But I had God speak. If it wasn't audible, I remember you. How you doing? Good to see you. If it wasn't audible, it was the closest thing that audible could be. Okay? And it was in Jacksonville, North Carolina. 
And I wasn't even, I was, this was before I was married. So I was about 20 years old. And I was preaching at this Pentecostal church in Jacksonville for revival. And here's what happened. I would go to that church every day because back then we had a week and two weeks, three weeks of revival. Right? About every night of the week, too. And we'll be having them again, by the way. Well, we're going to be having those kinds of moves of spirit. Because the times are going to demand it. So I was walking and 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 I would I would put my watch on and I would look at the time and I would not stop praying until three hours were up. I would literally pray every day in the church for three hours. And so I'm walking around, I'm praying. I'm the only one in that church building. I'm praying for the service that night. And I heard the closest I've ever heard to an audible voice of God. And I've never heard it before, and I've never heard it that powerful since. Everything else before and after was an impression, still small voice. But that day, it was unbelievable. And the voice said, Lloyd. I said, yes, I knew it was God. And he said, tonight, just speak my name. And I just cried and started thanking God because it was so moving to let me know, God, you're with me. You just, I just heard from you. And the other thing is, you must know what's going to take place tonight. Went to the service that night. I'm trying to keep the correct process in my mind. Filled up with people. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Oh, this was so crazy and powerful. It just came to me now. I prayed for a man. A bunch of people were just like this place was filled the altar was filled and I'm just going down praying for pe people and of course that was before I was a prophet operating as a prophet I was operating in the gift of the word of knowledge and I was telling people what the, and I went to this older man and and he said I'm uh, I'm, I'm deaf in my uh, left ear completely deaf and God instantly healed that man filled him with the Holy Ghost and then <laughs> this is what it was there was an older lady standing beside him and the Lord said ask her if she wants to be delivered from alcoholism and when I asked her she like stunned but she knew God had her number And then we cast that demon of alcohol out of her. <laughs> and then she was like, she was a tough gal. So we prayed and God popped her ear open too, healed her ear. She got so excited that she was like, acting like she was drunk she was just like so excited oh this is great this is great and I remember saying well she was bent over just like ah. and I said you want God to fill you with the Holy Ghost oh no no I don't want that there that's no 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 and that's when the Lord said speak my name and I said in the name of Jesus receive it and it wasn't even a millisecond. She was just playing out in the spirit, speaking in other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave her the utterance. So that was just wow. Halaboshata. Lift your hands up. 
Lord, I want everybody to receive something the next seven minutes. Everybody. 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 Be endued with the fire of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Remember what you were taught tonight. Two prayer lives. Seek wisdom. Operate in unity. Halaboshanda. Glory to God. Glory be to God. It's a good man right here. Halaboshanda. Thank you, Jesus. Do you, know, do you know anybody named Jack or Jake or Jack or Jake? Who? Neighbor Jack. You got a neighbor, Jack? Yeah. Good friend. Good friend. He's saved? Yes, sir. God's healing him right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He actually had a, uh, uh, I forgot, what, kidney stone today. Lift our hands. Come on, we're in the spirit here right now. Thank you for healing Jack's blood pressure. Thank you for healing his nerves too. Haraboshaka. Jack and who is Jake? Do you want anybody Jake or Jack? Jacob or Jacob or Jake? Who's been praying for Jacob or Jake? Anybody? I just put this thing out there and throw it out there. Huh? My last name is Jacobs. Lift your hands. You want a financial miracle and financial blessing? Yes, sir. Here it comes. And you're going to be healed, too. Thank you for the touch of the harabakoshadadababana. Oh, you're a precious girl. Bless. Thank you for the miracle. Thank you for the miracle. It's done. It's done. Thank you, Jesus. You like cars? You want a financial blessing? Sure. Here it comes. Are you in some sort of business or anything? Um, I'm a builder, yes. Yeah. Want God to bless it really good? Absolutely. Do you build houses? Yes, sir. How long have you been doing it? Uh, roughly 26 years. God's going to expand your vision. Going to expand your vision. Stephen was full of faith. You remind me of Stephen, full of faith. How many houses are you building right now? Just one addition. One addition? God says expand. Think bigger. Think bigger because he can trust you. And the other thing is, He wants you to trust Him and believe in yourself more. <laughs> Take it, brother. There it is. Jesus' holy name. And God's healing your knees right now while I pray. That's the gift of the word of knowledge operating. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you for touching your people. Kiranda Roboshanda. You like money? Love it. <laughs> you ever worked with money? I work with it every day.
This is powerful. I want to help Pastor Shane out right now, and I want to help this church out. And that's why God called me to call you out. I knew something would happen in the heavenlies because I didn't want to come all the way up here. I wanted to break into something for Bend Church. Something. Wow. Now look, here's the other thing, and I think I've told you when I was here before. I said, if I'm prophesying to somebody, if I say to this lady, God's going to save your son, and if you've got a son lost, that's, for, that's your word too. And, okay, so whatever, you know, if I say God's going to bless his business, you know, just if you want God, claim the word for you too, Okay. Hallelujah. The Bible says you obey the if you'll obey the word of the prophet, you will prosper. A true prophet does carry a prosperity anointing. Thank you for this lady. Thank you for this church. And thank you for Holy Spirit for telling me to ask her if she liked money. Because I just felt it impressed upon me. To ask her that prophetically, and she said, I work with it every day. So the Holy Spirit says, You're standing in for Pastor Shane and this church, okay? For the rest of the vision to be completed. I want you to prophesy because I see you standing in the bank and prophesy that the vision shall come to pass and every need will be supplied yes every need will be supplied in the name of Jesus thank you for the blessing thank you for the breakthrough thank you Thank you for the financial miracle for this land and for this building. Come on, people, let's go. Storm heaven right now. We got a word. We got a prophecy. We got something to pray about right now. Pray it through in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Come on. Come on. Call it done in the name of Jesus. Prophesy to that land. Prophesy to that building. Prophesy to the money. Prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory be to God. Now that is incredible. Absolutely. Come on, give it praise. Give it praise. Give it praise, give it praise. Come on, church. Come on. You're being equipped. You're being you're becoming stronger in God right now. You know anybody in Texas? You do? Tell them good things are about to happen. You know anybody in Texas? Huh? Tell them good things are about to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not, I know there's a Cleveland... There's a Cleveland, Ohio, but the Lord said, I'm going to move in Cleveland, Texas. Tell them, tell them, wherever, whatever. If that makes sense, it does, okay.
Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Get a double portion right now. Get a double portion in the name of Jesus. A double portion. Yes. A double portion. A double portion of faith. Oh my God. Double portion. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for the double portion. Yes, touching these young Jesus, a double portion. Come on, come on. on the holy fire of God is on you you're never going to be the same again your prayer life is going to go deeper your worship life is going to go deeper because you know God is speaking you know God is moving you know God's hand is upon this church in such a mighty way God is raising up this church to be a new Jerusalem I prophesy to you are being a new Jerusalem where the Holy Spirit shall fall like it did on the upper room. And you will raise the dead and cleanse the lepers, set the captives free. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit says <laughs> that I'm going to move in the college. Who's Jennifer? Quickly, who's Jennifer? Your wife? She works at a university. What? She works at a university. There it is. There's the sign, God. You see what God is doing? wife is Jennifer yes. and she works at the college. Just started a month ago. And you are Jennifer. Yes, I've been there almost 10 years. You work at the college. Yes. Lift your hands. That is yes. Lift your hands. I thought I was just going to teach a little bit. But man, God has come down in this church. It's because of your faith, because of your praise, because of your burden for the lost. See? There's two things that I know in this church. And I know it's your great pastor's heartbeat. Number one, he wants revival. And he wants it at the colleges too. And you do too. And he knows he's got to build. He knows that's got to happen. There has to be a building, a building, a building, a building. 
And that's the two main targets of God tonight. Did you hear that? Why in the world would God have me call this lady out that I don't know from Adam? And the Holy Spirit impressed upon me. Whatever I said. See, I forgot about it already. Money. You work at a bank. And what was that for? To let Shane know and let you know that God's got it. God's with you. God's heard your prayer. Start expecting the unexpected. Start expecting million dollar checks to be written for this building program. Start expecting it. God would not speak like this just to waste his breath. Come on. And then the second thing was the vision, the revival. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Oh, Rabo Shararama Mandarabo Sata. I see thousands of young people being delivered from drugs, from suicide. From demons of darkness filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. I come here to prophesy these things out of the heavens and bring them and give them to you tonight. So, Father, I thank you for Jennifer's double portions, revival in these colleges. Thank you, Lord, for the doors that you are opening. Thank you for the souls that are be are becoming hungry. Lord, we call these people in. Now you've got targets. Call it in in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, you got targets now. You know what to pray for. You know what to prophesy about. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're all in a different place right now. We're all in a, a new heavenly place. I did not expect this tonight. Did not expect it. But I know what happens when you surrender and just give yourself to God. You just, you, God comes on the scene. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So not only is God taking care of Pastor Shane and Pam physically, and, but he's taking care of the vision now. And the two, two main targets. God identified them tonight. And God said, Ben Church, I'm with you. You're right in the smack in the middle of my will. I'm using you. So I thank you, Lord, for the financial miracles for this land and for these buildings. Hallelujah. Mm. This is a new thing. I don't know why I'm saying this, but the Holy Spirit said, start praying for Sparta and Spartan and Sparta. Hey, there's, well, look it up. Google it. And look it up. It's way back in the Greek days and all that. There's and there's a significance there. Okay, huh? There's a place called Sparta. Just, just south of here. Yeah, it's where we live. That's my. Well, Pam and I never. No, we, we never saw that. We never heard of Sparta. I just heard Sparta in Greek. That's what I heard. Sparta. 
around you where you were sitting is supposed to spark. But God's targeting things. He's targeting geographical areas. So just, I mean, go witness. Go win souls. Just don't think, well, the prophet prophesied is going to happen. No, go obey the word now. Go obey the word. Pray it. You, Paul said, Timothy, you got a prophecy. No, go pray it through. You got to go pray it through now. God bless you, everybody. I love you. Well, y'all heard the man. You're dismissed. Make sure you hug somebody on the way out. Have the best week of your life.